Waking up knowing there's a reason All my dreams come alive Life is for living with you I've made my decision You lift me up, fill my eyes with wonder Forever young in your love This freedom's untainted with you The moment is wasted See the sun now bursting through the clouds Black and white Turn the color all around All is new in the Savior i found What's up fam and thank you so so much for stopping by the channel Once again from us over here at Locust and Wild Honey So today we are with the man, the myth, the legend The one who has been MIA There's been no beef except the beef within a burger. But it's Neems, he's back. <laughs> What's up guys? What's up y'all? As I always say, we're here to do another vlog and, you know, be legendary. <laughs> be legendary, I like that. So we just got here to Pakistan. So yes, indeed, fog did restock. And I believe they will be restocking through the duration of the whole month, every week on uh, Saturday. So uh, if you guys can get your stuff, um, just rest assured that you will have a very good chance of doing so. And I wouldn't suggest paying uh, resale unless it's online exclusive because those stuff uh, haven't dropped yet. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, putt through this stuff and see what we can find. Pretty ass, they don't have the fog stuff that I was looking for. I just want to do a size swap for the stuff that I have, and they don't have it. So, guess. I don't think this is the ASAP stuff, but it's still pretty cool. I like that, uh, that aqua color one. And then this, oh, yeah, nice. pretty cool. I like, I, I like your outfit a lot today, Names. Thank Very you. nice. Thank you. Spring vibes. Spring vibes. <laughs> shorts are a great alternative to the fog shorts if you took an L. These especially, because the black shorts, very hard to come by. So I haven't found any represent boots, but these are actually really nice. 150 plus an extra 25% off. I like the shape of these two a lot. Here's another really sick pair of boots. They are from a brand called Rouge, I believe, or Rush. It's like really good. So one thing to do or look for when you're looking for Chelsea boots is look at the toe box, see if it's to your liking. Um, sometimes they can be too wide or too narrow. Uh, what I find is the narrow ones are for bit dressier occasions, whereas when you go a little bit wider, it makes it a little bit more um, able to be dressed down. And then also the opening. Opening is huge uh, for picking Chelsea boots, so not all of them created equal. The shape, huh? It's too pointy for a Chelsea, in my opinion. For a casual Chelsea. Yeah, it's more of like a... Well, yeah, check it out. Seventy nine dollars. Like the color, every it's okay. Yeah, the color's cool. I will say that. Yeah, that cream color. Here's a top man jacket, denim jacket. Original price is one twenty, down to fifty six, plus twenty five percent off. It's not too bad. Let's see what else we can find here. It's a nice bomber. Most of this stuff is outerwear. It's pretty good looking uh, flannel here. Original price was 89 down to 34 plus an additional 25% off. Not bad. Thing is, notice most of this stuff isn't in season. One thing that I always come to Nordstrom Rack for is Calvin Klein underwear. That the normal colors like the gray, the black, and the white. And 
They also have packs when it's just like all white and stuff. Uh, it's a it's a bit cheaper here. It's like twenty dollars, I believe. And if you buy, say were to buy it, say like Nordstrom or like Topman, they're like forty. So not a bad deal. So unfortunately, we did not find any represent boots there. Um, I do know that this Nordstrom rack is a little bit smaller, so I think we're gonna try the one at South Coast. Maybe if we head up there, but. Um, Man, that's crazy that he found them. I think he said he paid like 130 for them. Wow. Which is insane. How much? Like those are like 320. Yeah. So that's and crazy. And it's a really good quality shoe too. In my, even if we could find anything represent. Would yeah. Be yeah. Anyways, we're hungry. I haven't eaten yet today. I don't think that you have either. Nope. So we're going to get some grub. What's up guys? So we just got here to the Irvine Spectrum Center and I found a new restaurant. We're trying it out. It's called Del Frisco's Grill. We've always just kind of driven by it and never kind of stop to look at it we've been sleeping this place is amazing um, what we got here is brunch and this is the uh, chicken and waffles with a thick cut bacon guys just the aroma like just like being exuded from our food it's just so it just smells so good anyways we're not gonna sleep anymore no we're about to eat it's so good guys just look at this dude it like look at that so good. Delicioso. Initial thoughts. This is Paula Dean meets Giada de Florentes. <laughs> I had to give you guys a check in because the experience has been nothing short of legendary. Speaking of legendary, you guys gotta check this place out if you're ever in Irvine. Del Frisco's. It's outstanding. Like I said, people have been sleeping on this place. Like, we've been sleeping. I know. I literally cannot believe we have never been here before. It's so good. Um, the food was amazing. Like, amazing quality. Like, you would think that you. I spent like $40 on the food. It was so good. And it was so nice. Like, they brought, they gave us free uh, uh, coffees here. And then on the house, because it's our first time, they gave us this uh, bread pudding. Uh, it's Nutella with coffee ice cream on top. It's so good. So we just got done with lunch and dessert. It was amazing. Once again, thank yeah. you, Del Frisco, for the incredible service and the great food. Now we're heading into the packs in here at Irvine Spectrum to try and exchange my stuff for different sizes. Hopefully I can get the right stuff here. Supposedly they have a lot more, more garments, so. Let's see what's up. What's up guys, so we just got here to Urban Outfitters. Um, they actually have a 40% off all sale garments uh, thing going on right now. And they actually marked down a lot of new stuff. Let's go ahead and see what we can find. I've yet to really spruce around, look around, but from based on what's online, there's some cool stuff. So let's see what we can find. Fit of the day went very simple. Uh, black boxy tee with a layered tank. And then a Fear God denim along with the triple white Y3s. And then, I guess the stable piece is my St. Laurent backpack, which I will do a review on. Oh, these denim jackets are really nice. Pretty simple, they don't have the reglan sleeves, but still a nice denim jacket. For $80, I think you can find better alternatives though. It's a ton of sleeveless flannels or like the distressed sleeve flannels a ton of them it's pretty much that whole rack i was contemplating purchasing this laker souvenir jacket before i don't know why i just i really like it and i'm a huge laker fan i think i'm gonna get it but not right now these bombers are super nice too actually just the alpha industries bomber super sick if you guys ever come to Urban and you're looking for a backpack, check this one out. Urban has a new line of backpacks. I love the color of this one. Um, it's got that like suede kind of look to it. It's not suede for sure, but it still looks really good. It's got that matted green or olive, really nice. $39, you can't really go wrong. 
just got in here to cotton on. Honestly, don't know what I'm gonna do for this outfit challenge because honestly, I'm wearing shoes that are a bit too bulky for spring. I'm wearing the Y3s today. I can work with them because they are triple white and that should be a lot easier, but I do wish I was wearing Vans today, but we're gonna see what we can do. So when it comes to dressing for the warmer months of the year, simplicity is key. Um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do a distressed denim. Here's the thing, I know I've been wearing distressed denim throughout the duration of winter and fall, but to be honest with you, distressed denim is best worn during the summertime. So I'm gonna go with a light denim on the bottom um, with a little bit of distressing, and I'm gonna roll up and like cuff the bottom just to give that like, that it's you know spring vibes, so. Gosh, like I said, vibes. I've been hanging out with Neems too long today. For those of you who feel like the vintage t-shirt trend is over, um, I don't necessarily think that's the case. Of course, the hype probably won't be there as much because it's been kind of convoluted. But for those of you who do prefer them um, and who've kind of rocked with that like genre of style, um, and why I actually personally haven't been wearing my vintage tees in a while, is because they actually look best during the springtime and the summertime months. So um, that's what I have here. So we just got here to the fitting room. I actually took like, at least 30 minutes to get back here. It's such a long line. Oh, uh, we got a creeper. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm gonna try this stuff on, see how it looks. Uh, I definitely think I went for a safer outfit. To be honest with you, there wasn't too many options here because most of the things have like some sort of like print or like some sort of like um, embellishing with regard to like brands or pictures or what have you um, as you guys may know like I like to keep my stuff pretty basic I even like really refrain from wearing my off-white stuff just because I just don't like wearing things as loud but let's go ahead and see what outfit I put together so here's my outfit very casual very effortless let's go ahead and see how it looks on all right guys so here's the outfit that I went with as you can see here I have a vintage very very aged black sabbath shirt it's uh, oversized um and i decided like the way i kind of think about it is like this is something i'd wear like say for spending um time at the boardwalk and i wanted something like during sunset just throw like a light hoodie over it and of course this does come out to less than a hundred dollars i actually really messed with these jeans i'm really happy with the way they fit the length is, is great i actually pull them up just a little bit and let my calves kind of keep them up a little higher for stacking behind the knee i mean at the knee region but yeah, this outfit is like a, a bit more fitted than I usually would go for, but I um, kind of like it. So this outfit challenge is going to be a little bit different because me and Zach are just going to switch SD cards uh, just because there's so many people out there and we don't want to like, you know, like draw too much attention to ourselves. But this is the outfit. Let's go ahead and switch SD cards and see Neem's outfit right now. Okay, so everything is just like not fitted. So with folding and with like different techniques, I'm trying to achieve the fit that I want this to go. Um, but here's the final outfit. I'm trying like the sew of these things is not that great. Like the proportions of like the sleeves to the length and everything. But let me know how I did. This is the outfit that I went with. Welcome back guys. So that was Neem's submission. Uh, here's my submission one more time. Mine's just very basic, very casual, uh, extremely effortless. Um, just a vintage shirt up top, uh, some stonewashed jeans here at the bottom, uh, cuffing them, and then we have the white sneakers. So yeah, I, I imagine myself like you know, walking around uh, LA with an outfit like this, throwing some shades in my backpack, and just kind of be on the go. And then say if it cools down, we'll throw on the hoodie. That's what it is, man. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this outfit challenge. I'll see you guys outside of Cotton On. So we stopped for coffee, we just got done with the outfit challenge. And those things really take a lot out of you, to be yeah. honest. Like the waiting, the standing, the changing. You should I don't know. If I don't know if you guys feel this way, but changing is such a pain in the tuchus. Slap that like button if you did enjoy the outfit challenge, comment on. And yeah, man, we're gonna continue on with this vlog right after we enjoy this nice cold beverage. What's up, guys? So we just got here to Nordstrom. Um, one thing I did want to say is Topman is always the safest bet when it comes to 
shopping for just items on trend. So when it comes to denim, if you guys aren't planning or hoping to purchase things online, come check out Top Man, um, whether it's at Nordstrom or the respective Top Man shop nearest to you. Definitely worth a look. So I'm gonna see what we can find here. As I already said, Top Man's denim is a must. If you guys are looking for cheap, affordable, yet comfortable denim, fits very nicely, check Top Man out. The black, very nice stretch skinny. Just stretch slim. I prefer the stretch skinny. Um, this denim actually sells out all the time online. So I'm in the Top Man dressing room. I'm gonna try on some black denim because I do need some denim that I can just kind of wear without zippers. Like honestly, like all the ones I have right now are like super beat up and just like poor quality. Um, and they don't really fit right. So I'm gonna try some of Top Man's. Um, I do really like the way they fit. So let's hopefully they look good. Um, yeah, I just want pants to just be able to wear um, that like I can just kind of dress up, you know, denim. So let's go see how it looks. All right guys, so here's the denim. Like I said before, I love the way Top Man denim fits. It just fits really well. Um, super easy, effortless denim. I love the wash as well. It has a nice little aged look to them. A uh, very minimal distressing, just a couple slits. And really the, the biggest reason why I'm getting this is because I don't think that uh, zipper denim looked that good with boots and I just got some Chelsea's. So yeah, I like these a lot. I'll pick yeah, these ones up. For sure. They really well. Really happy. I always love how Top Man denim fits. Yeah, nice and slim, right? Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Appreciate Have it. Day, Have a good one. So that's gonna do it for the shopping slash mall portion of this vlog. Once again, Neems, thank you so much for being in the video, my friend. Thank you for being in my video as well. And of course, it's always a pleasure. Highlight of the vlog: Del Frisco's chicken oh, and waffles. Oh, so good. Yeah. Anyways, guys, I'll see you at home. We'll meet up in just a little bit. What's up guys, so I just got home, but before I end this video, I did wanna end this vlog with a bit of a conversation piece. By the time you're probably gonna be watching this video, um, it'll be Easter Sunday. And first and foremost, I wanted to wish everybody a happy, happy Easter. He is risen. Um, I know there's a lot of confusion as to what this holiday is about. Um, is it about a giant bunny? Is it about chocolate? Is it about Easter eggs? Um, and truth be told, um, that's not necessarily what this holiday is predicated on. And I'd like to dive into that. Easter is easily my favorite holiday, and that's relative to Christmas. I love Christmas so much. It's probably the best time of the year, but when it comes to a one day celebration, uh, there's really nothing quite like Easter for me. Now, I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate comments because um, it's never a good idea to talk about one's faith, especially given the platform um, that I have, but I feel so compelled to kinda discuss it with you guys and share my excitement, and truth be told, um, Jesus, following Jesus, Christianity is the main constituent of what makes me me, and quite frankly, it's undoubtedly the best part of who I am, and it would be such a huge disservice to not share uh, the most important aspect of my life with you guys. So I did want to talk to you guys a little bit about Easter. For those of you who don't know what it's about, who have always kind of dappled with the ideology of Christianity, why are these people like so weird? Why are they different? Why are they so happy all the time? What do they get out of Easter? What's this all about? What's all this craziness all about? So Easter is essentially a huge celebration to what us Christians call the gospel. And the word gospel actually translates to a specific word, a Hebrew word that means good news. However, for news to be good, it can't stand alone. It has to invade bad spaces. For news to be good, it has to enter into dark spaces. So what's the bad news? So the bad news is this. At the very beginning of time, uh, there was a cataclysmic division between man and God and God and man. And we see that there's a vast difference as to how God related to us and how we related to God um, in the very first book of the Bible. We see the first activity between God and man and man and God looking simply like this. They walked in the cool of the day. Now, I get a sense, and when I think about that, I just get a sense of perfect harmony. Just like enjoying a slight breeze, walking with God in a perfect relationship prior to sin entering into the world. Now the word sin can kind of be 
like a subjective word, an arbitrary word. There's like such a theological uh, context to it that I just don't believe is like the best way to understand what this day is really about um, and what um, the celebration really is. The way I like to think about sin is a really dumbed down, watered down version, but I think it's really effective way to look at it. Sin is essentially um, our pride, aka or resulting in a distrust in God. So what actually had happened was uh, we had the opportunity to say to ourselves, if we eat of this tree of knowledge of good and evil, we would know and be just like God. We would be equal to God. Put simply, sin is just a manifestation of our pride, enabling us or pushing us to step away from God and step closer to our selfish desires. Now, as a byproduct of those selfish desires manifesting themselves, it'll result in, you know, killing somebody else because they do something better than you or stealing from somebody else because X, Y, or Z. Here's the thing. God is good. He's so good and he's certainly gracious, um, always blessing us with more than we deserve. We can look at common grace. We can look at the many different things that we get to enjoy as a byproduct of just being human. And that doesn't even have to mean that you're Christian or you're non-Christian. These are just graces that we get to enjoy. That being said, for God to be good through and through, he also has to be gracious as well as being just. The thing with God is he cannot act outside the content of his character. God is God through and through. He can't double date with sin. He can't partake in sin. He can't be around sin. It's the antithesis of who he is. From the very depth of his character, he cannot, he he can't mess with sin. It's just not in his nature. He's not about it. And it's just not him. Here's the thing. I think it goes without saying that when distrust enters a relationship, when this aspect of I deserve more and looking out solely for oneself um, comes into play and let letting pride be the center by which you function, that is the perfect recipe for a broken relationship. And that's essentially what happened between us and God. And to be honest with you guys, it's sounding pretty dreary right now. It sounds like there's no possible chance that we can make it out of this because we're not perfect thing. When we look at the 10 commandments, when we look at the additional um, over a hundred mosaic laws that were added um, later on in the old Testament. And furthermore, hearing Jesus talk more specifically about what these rules entail that say, if you look at a woman lustfully, you've all pretty much already done the act. There is no possible way for us to make it back to God and fix this relationship that had been so tarnished. It honestly sounds pretty dreary. It sounds like we have no shot. It sounds like just a really dark ending to a very sad story. Good news enters the picture and he comes in the form of Jesus. The reason why we celebrate Easter, the reason why there's this unsurmountable amount of joy and peace that just covers me and just enshrouds my heart and gets me so hyped for the big celebration that's going to be happening tomorrow and for people who are going to be giving their lives to Christ, getting baptized and everything that comes along with it. There was a savior, a superhero figure that stepped into the gap, stepped into this cataclysmic chasm that stood before myself and God and God and myself and you and God and God and you. And he took on the punishment, the full wrath of what we deserved as a byproduct of our sin. Put simply, Jesus took on what we deserved in hopes that you would receive what he deserves. Jesus was perfect. He was spotless. He was blameless. Scripture goes as far as to say is God couldn't help himself but split the heavens wide open and say, this is my boy in who I am well pleased. And now that we are hidden in Christ, as it says in Colossians 3, there's nothing that we can do to separate for us from his love again. That's essentially why we celebrate Easter, man. It is the best news in history. Um, Jesus' resurrection is, it means so much to Christians. It means so much to humanity because we get a shot. We get a shot to be back with Christ and it is so rad. The promises that come before us far supersede any hardships that we may endure here and now and today. So I just wanted to end with that. That's the reason for our joy. That's the reason why it ain't gonna stop. And that's the reason why 
we celebrate Easter. He's risen. I hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog and I pray that you guys would all enjoy your Easter with your families regardless of where you're at in this crazy story that we call life. I appreciate you all. Happy Easter. He is risen. And as I end every video here at Locust Wild Honey, I'm going to say peace and be blessed.